Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Remy Dacor. I'm from a small company, XOS, based in the south of France, in Bordeaux. Uh, and I'm here to present the work of a small team of engineers regarding piston expander developments. Uh, and I chose to focus to, on um, car application for this presentation, but we also work on uh, heavy duty application. Um, uh, first of all, why do I uh, talk about car application and fuel efficiency in car application? It is mainly because the, um, there is worldwide regulation that is being implemented in Europe, United States, Japan, but maybe also in China in the, in the, in the next coming year. And we have to do uh, fuel cuts uh, in the internal combustion engine. And then uh, we may have a look on the energy repetition of the, the engine. And as my, the former speaker, Mr. Uh, Giedemann, uh, said, there is a lot of energy lost in the exhaust uh, gases. And my, f my point today is to uh, explain you how we can reach 3 to 5% fuel cuts on a diesel engine and maybe up to 8% on petrol engine. Okay, a first, uh, a first slide on the um, ranking cycle specification regarding hot source and cold sinks. And from the hot source, uh, the main uh, temperature we can, uh, we can have is uh, 600 degrees uh, on the exhaust gases for petrol engine and down to 300 degrees uh, for diesel engine and on EGR, on exhaust gas recirculation, you may have also high temperature. This is the, the hot source uh, characteristics. And as you can see, there is um, a, risk, a risk of um, freed and oil, or freed and lubricant decomposition at this temperature. You, so you, have very, you need to be very, very careful using uh, organic fluids that may decompose quickly. And you may, for example, limit the operating temperature of such a fluid to uh, uh, less than 200 degrees C. And regarding the cold sinks, it may bring here the, the major constraints on the ranking cycle. Uh, you have very limited space for cooling the, the ranking cycle. You are very, um, there is a big issue on the integration of an additional uh, radiator or uh, additional uh, load on the existing radiator. And then we are uh, often asked to, uh, to use high condensing temperature up to 80 degrees C to cool our cycle, up to 100 degrees C to cool the, the, the cycle. The idea is to uh, mainly reuse the existing cooling circuits that run at 90 degrees C. And when you take these um, constraints into account, you, 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 can't, uh, you can see that ethanol, water, or mixture of ethanol and water fit best to these constraints. That's why I I'm, I'm totally agree with, my, with the former speaker. And we also uh, look at this fluid uh, first. And the fact is that this fluid to be um, fully um, allowed to use the, the uh, the, 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 the grid potential of this fluid, you need high expansion ratio on your expansion machine. Um, and that's why we, we use a piston expander on, in my company. Sorry. Okay, a, a short overview on different technologies. There is not all the technologies uh, here, but I can talk about impulse turbine, piston expander, scroll or screw expanders. Oh, there is different uh, works regarding this expander on the, on dif uh, on the different um, car makers, uh, tier one uh, manufacturers, uh, work on different technology of expander. There is impulse turbine that has a great advantage that can run oil free and it's very compact due to its high speed uh, rotation, rotation, but I speak also 
drive uh, lots of constraints regarding uh, design of the bearings, uh, design of the, um, the balancing of the of this uh, turbine. But the main constraint of turbine is the droplet, the droplets intolerance. They do not accept droplets, so that you need for with water, for example, you, not, you need very high um, overheating that li that will limit the maximum pressure, uh, maximum operating pressure. So it is very difficult to design a turbine uh, for water. But for ethanol, which is nearly an isentropic fluid, you can you can reach good good results. There is also volumetric expanders, uh, piston and, sc and scroll. Uh, as they are volumetric, they are very robust to transient conditions. I mean, they mainly accept droplets, and they are provided you can uh, vary the speed, the rotational speed of this expander. You can have a very efficient um, uh, expander at any load. That is very important for highly dynamic uh, hot source like uh, mobile applications. And, with, and for a piston expander, you can have very high expansion rate ratio. Um, the interest also of scroll is that is nearly off the shelf, but you have very limited expansion ratio with a single scroll provided you, you can't reach high diameters. And uh, we, make, we made a big choice, a strong choice. Um, a few years ago, uh, my company chose to, to work on, on, on an oil-free piston expander. And then, since five years ago, we are developing this expander. We first worked on a single cylinder expander that is nearly totally oil-free. It was able to produce two electrical kilowatts, and we manufactured two prototypes, one for performance assessment, one for endurance tests. Endurance tests because we have highly, uh, well, we have uh, non-lubricated parts, and we need to assess the wear of these parts. There is only a small chamber of oil to drive the cam, the cams, of uh, the, we have two pop-up valves on this uh, expander, so we have lubricated cams, and thi this cam can be re removed so that we have an adjustable uh, valve timing. We can test different configuration. Well, this expander was tested uh, since uh, three years now, and we have uh, some results. Uh, regarding performance, uh, the Effective isentropic effectiveness of this expander reaches 50% on its best configuration. And then we were able to calibrate a very simple uh, zero dimension model. And we plugged this model on a, on, a petro, on a two liter petrol engine map. And we can see that the ratio expander power to ICE power may reach 8% on, on this zone, 5 to 8%. And that means this zone is the, 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 um, the zone that is mainly used for uh, homologation. The homologation points uh, are within this zone. So that's why I can say today that the, on, on a petrol engine, a ranking cycle may reach 5 to 8% fuel cuts. Why fuel cuts? Because this is this indicator is the simplest indicator to to figure out what would be the, the fuel cuts. And you have then to take into account the positive and negative side effects. Negative would be mass, uh, positive would be that you produce electricity, and then you can re-inject electricity whenever you want. You can electrify and auxiliaries, etc. Regarding uh, endurance tests on this ex expander, uh, we, w we had unlubricating sliding piston rings and also unlubricated um, inlet system. And we reach this uh, wear rate, five, uh, 10 at the power of uh, minus eight uh, cubic millimeter per Newton meter. This is, uh, I will, in the next slide, I will explain what is the, 
the, the scale of these uh, rail rates. And this allows us to, to think of, uh, of no maintenance on a car application of the piston rings, for example. We, we can have a piston rig that is nearly oil-free or totally oil-free that has no maintenance during the whole life of an expander for, for car application. And we can think of two years uh, without maintenance on the, on the piston rings for heavy-duty application. And here you have the scale of the rail rate. Uh, at the top of the scale, you have a uh, no lubricated system and a lubricated system at the bottom. And this is our, we achieved today of five. Um, uh, we achieved this rail rate and we have targets for next year uh, to, to go even lower. And we carefully selected our material and now we can have very good um, lifetime of piston rings and inlet system. And then, thanks to this valuable data, we developed a new generation prototype on the next, on the next two years, uh, which is m far more compact. And it is a swatch plate ar architecture with five cylinders and it is able to run with water or ethanol. And it still has an oil-free hot hand, inlet system and piston rings has no lubrication, but we reintroduce a lubricated crankcase to reach higher compactness. And then we were forced to add a separation device inside the expander uh, that allows us to separate from the lubricated part from the uh, non-lubricated part. And today we can uh, say that we have, we only need an, an oil change every uh, 1,500 hours, which means every one, every year for a heavy duty application. So we, we still have a maintenance. It would be free to refill every year for a heavy duty application. Well, tests are in progress for, on this expander. I will show you the early results and endurance tests will be done next year. Uh, the early results of, on this expander are not that good. This is uh, the effective isentropic effectiveness. We are only at 30%. The main point is that we have a huge um, friction, uh, mechanical losses in this expander. We are working on it. And the second point is that tests were performed with water and it was designed for ethanol. It means a lot a bigger uh, volumetric flow, so a lower impact of internal leakage. So I'm sure that next year I will have more, uh, more test results and better test results on this expander as ethanol tests are in progress. And we are currently updated, uh, updating the bench to, to, to reach higher power on this team. Okay. Uh, and I think it was my last slide. Okay, this is the, the expander we developed. I, talk, I was talking about this one, and we have a new one for truck application, which, which would be a bit bigger. Thank you for your attention. You may have some questions. I did not explain the, the different models. I wanted to do, to do straight to the results. Um, this model, there is, in fact, we have several models. Uh, we, on this model, we only use two um, parameters that comes from experiment data. Uh, we use the filling factor and the isentropic effectiveness. Um, this is the zero D model. So we, uh, we make maps on filling factor, which is the ability to, 
of the expander to um, to deal with uh, the volume of, of steam. You may enter when it's superior to one. You have uh, internal leakage. I mean, you con you consume too much uh, too much steam flow, and which inferior uh, at at one, which is what when it is inferior to one, you have pressure drops, for example, at inlet. And size entropic effectiveness, you can also do a map on this, um, on the, um, based on the experimental data. Which was plotted on this, on this uh, graph, it is um, first the, uh, the experimental data, um, a polynomial fit on the experimental data, but we also did a one-dimensional model and we tried to uh, to figure out what would be the, the losses, the different losses, internal leakage, heat exchange, and mechanical losses. We made different models, we calibrate these models, and we figure out nearly the same feature. And what would be, what was the, the, the main impact was the in internal leakage, in fact. As we have oil-free system, we have no oil film that helps to, to the tightness of the only system, for example. And th the main losses was internal leakage. This expander, uh, the size is written there, and uh, the, the weight is the weight of the prototype. Uh, the prototype, as you can see, it is machined. Uh, there is no foundry at all. So the less you machine the, uh, the parts, the less it's got, so it's very heavy. And we, we made some uh, design with foundry, uh, and we can reach nearly 9 to 10 kilograms for this expander, and, and it doesn't include the generator. It is, but for, for a car it's a bit too big. You can, we can reduce the size with having a lower capacity. And for a truck it is too small. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, if you are aiming to um, recover only the EGR, Heat, it is okay, but if you if you want to do in parallel exhaust heat and EGR heat, it is too small. You, you will have very low expansion ratio to to be able to 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 eat the the steam flow, to to introduce a, the, the right steam flow in the expander. You will have to to lower the expansion ratio and then to have a poor efficiency. So the next version here for 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 trucks. Uh, it's a bit bigger. In fact, it is a bit longer. Uh, it can reach uh, 40 uh, centimeters. 40 centimeters. We have any gener uh, generator. Okay, it's very heavy. It was made for. Uh, it is uh, the weight first. It is 80 kilograms. 80 kilograms. Very very heavy. It wasn't uh, made for compactness at all. Uh, it was made for uh, long lasting. And we designed it for 100,000 hours of running to be able to do all the tests we wanted. And we um, designed it for easy maintenance. We, for example, in five minutes, we can do the maintenance on the piston rings so that we can, for example, we can uh, remove the piston, uh, check the piston rings, check the wear on the piston rings, and then replace the piston in five minutes. It was designed for that so that we can have very uh, easy uh, assessment of the wear of different parts. But it is very heavy. And another defect on this expander it is it has a, uh, lots of vibrations. At this is single cylinder, it it's, uh, there's lots of vibration. Uh, so it is not, uh, it is, it's interesting for tests, but not for commercial application at all. <laughs> 